Who doesn't love beautiful old-fashioned garden flowers, particularly if they're perennials? Well, what I'm planting today as a bare root is a beautiful early lavender tall phlox, like we used to see in our grandmother's gardens. And what I'm doing is I'm planting this bare root plant, and what I've done is I've actually let it hydrate a little bit for about three hours in some water. And you can see I've turned it just up to this level so you can begin to see last year's stems, those hard little almost wood-like stems. That's where the plant emerges and you can see this new growth ready to come forward. Planting bare root this time of year in the early spring is a time-honored method of planting things like these perennials. So all I'm gonna do is take this phlox. I'm just gonna pull some soil back. You want a rich garden soil. I'm gonna lay it in there like this. Remember the stems are up and I'm just gonna pull the soil up to where those stems will be level with the ground. Now all I have to do is water it in and off she goes. Who doesn't love a perennial a plant that comes back year after year that's really tough, can take dry conditions and blooms all summer? Well, this is Russian sage and I'm planting some of these bare root plants. And you can see what I've done is I've actually moistened the roots for about five hours, let them hydrate. These bare root plants can come in. You see they're just loaded with lots of buds ready to burst forth. This time of spring, it's a good time to plant them. All you do is just take a good garden soil like this, it's been loosely worked. It has to be well drained and Russian sage loves full sun. Just spread out the roots and then pull the soil up around it and then water it in. You'll be amazed how quickly this will come out and bloom. Sometimes in our gardens, we may start out with full sun, but then over time, because of the trees, it becomes shady. So what do you do? Well, one of my favorite solutions is hosta. There are so many beautiful varieties of them. You just can't believe some of the leaf shapes, the variegation, the color. And what I love to do is create a tapestry of them, mix them all up, create a ground cover of hosta. So how about a few tips that I've learned over the years that can help put you in good stead if you want to grow hosta? First of all, when it comes to soil, they like a rich, loamy soil, one that drains really well. They don't like soggy soil at all. The other thing is they like it slightly acidic, not too alkaline. The other thing you wanna keep in mind is fertilizing them. In the spring, when they just begin to come up, I take fertilizer and put it around them. That feeds them, and as they emerge, well, the foliage is unbelievable. Hostas are easily grown from started plants like these or as bare root. Now, what I've found with them is the more hostas, the better. If you're interested in exploring a variety of hostas, check out the offering that we have with our Moss Mountain Farm Collection plants. Boy, you guys are just beautiful. Just look at these gorgeous hosta. Who doesn't love hosta? A wonderful perennial. But what about some companion plants that play well with hosta in the garden? Whether you're planting them in beds or containers, let's take a look at a few. Ferns, there's so many different types of ferns. This is just one Japanese painted fern. But think about the lacy texture contrasted with hosta. And then over here, they're actually shade loving grasses. This is one called snowcap. It's a carex. Absolutely love it, ideal for containers. And then there are coral bells, or hookra. They come in such a wide range of color and leaf pattern, it's absolutely crazy. So think about some of these companions, and remember, they're all perennial, so they're gonna come back year after year.
Everyone loves perennials because they come back in the garden, right? Well, I'm planting some Speedwell or Veronica. I like to plant them in the early spring as a bare root plant. You can see I've hydrated these by just putting them in water for about five hours. And now I'm planting them in some rich, well-drained soil that gets full sun. And all I do is I just pull back the pre-prepared soil and I just spread the roots out. You can see the stems on this plant from last year. And I'm just gonna pull the soil up with those little stems just sticking up like that. All right, then I'll water it in. And once they begin to put out some green shoots, I'll mulch this bed to help keep the weeds down and to keep the soil consistently moist. Hey, when these things bloom, it'll be gorgeous. We've all heard fresh as a daisy. Well, I'm planting some Shasta daisies and I'm using bare root plants. So the time honored way to plant perennials, what I love about Shasta daisies and many perennials, of course, is that they come back year after year. So once you plant them, they're gonna be in the garden for a long time. When I knew I was ready to plant them in the garden, I soaked them for about five hours in water just so they'd rehydrate the roots. Now what I've done is I've identified where the stem was last year. Now I'm just gonna place this in the ground with that stem just at the surface of the ground, just like this, okay? And then I'll water it in. I'll put a little stick beside it, and then once it leafs up, I'll put a little mulch on the ground to keep the weeds down and help keep the soil and moisture consistent. And I'll have daisies for decades to come. Spring is a great time to plant bare root perennials, and that's what I'm doing just now. One of my favorites is Red Hot Poker. It has the most beautiful bloom on it, and they're really easy to grow. With these bare root plants, when they came in, I just soaked them in water for about four to five hours. They hydrated, and now it's time to plant them in the garden. You can see I have some really loose, loamy soil here with lots of compost in it, and I'm just gonna make sure that I can spread these roots out like this with the crown of the plant lining up with the top of the soil. And I just pull the soil around like this, then I'll water it in and we're off to the races. It'll be blooming in no time. Hey, do you love peonies? I certainly do. It's one of my favorite spring flowers. If you're planting a tuber, there's some things you need to know. This is a beautiful peony tuber. You can see the eyes popping out there, and that's the stem from last year's growth. What I wanna do is I wanna plant this with the soil about here. You wanna make sure that you put it in good garden soil. It's nice and loamy, well-drained, and in full sun. And you just pull the soil around like this. These will last for decades in your garden if planted correctly. When you begin to explore the fascinating and beautiful world of peonies, you begin to realize there's so many different variations, uh, certainly in color, uh, when they flower, early, mid, late, and so forth, and then of course the flower shape itself. So let's take a look at some of those flower forms, the form of the, the bloom. This one is the simplest. This is a single or Japanese type. You can see the stamens here in the center are golden, and this is a beautiful one introduced in 1931. This is called Shaler's Sunburst, and it does look like a beautiful sunburst. So simple and with a subtle fragrance to it. This beauty, on the other hand, is called Kickapoo. 
also introduced in 1931, but it's called an anemone type, just to make it confusing. So why don't we call a peony anemone? <laughs> crazy, right? But what you have here is you still have that single row of petals like we saw on the single or the Japanese type. But look at how those stamens are exaggerated. You almost have this large ball-like shape, uh, which really adds a lot of I think, punch to this particular flower. Okay, so as you might guess, there are other types. So why don't I set Kickapoo down so we can enjoy the company of Shaler Sunset and we'll take a look at some others. All right, now let's talk about two other forms. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, there's so many out here in this field. Um, this is a beautiful one called Felix Krauss, and it's called the bomb form. And you see this single row of petals going around here, but then this round display of petals like this, very spherical. Uh, and you can see down in there just barely, hardly, you can see the stamens in there. They're completely hidden. Now that compared to this one, which is called Negrikens, uh, which was introduced um, in the early 1890s. Uh, this is a double, full on double. There are also semi-doubles that aren't quite nearly as full. Um, and you can see a little bit more of that stamen showing in there. But this one is very, very beautiful. You can see as it emerges, uh, the, each petal with this gorgeous pink is outlined in a paler pink, uh, which makes this very rare peony. All right, so let's talk about these shapes in review. Just look at all these splendid beauties. The singles, um, here's the one we talked about, Shaler Sunburst but here are a few others you might consider. This one's Claire de Lune, and this beauty here is a single called Okinawa. And then remember Kickapoo. Uh, this is an anemone type, single row of petals, but this exaggerated sort of ball of anthers. And then next was Bomb. You can see Felix Krauss here with the single row of petals around the edge. And then this round bomb, uh, named after a dessert that was very popular in the 1930s. And then, of course, the doubles, and uh, I think Sarah Bernhardt may be the most popular. Um, we, of course, talked about the double um, Negrikens, which is so, so beautiful. And then somewhere in between, we have the Sima doubles, where you'll see a little bit more of that golden stamen. So there you go, a wide range of beauty and just the shape of these gorgeous flowers, the peony. Boy, you all are so gorgeous. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and be sure to ring the bell for notifications.